k means you already know one of the more popular clustering algorithms. But as I have mentioned, there exist many different algorithms that aim at clustering your dataset. Different algorithms have their pros and cons, and not every dataset allows for every clustering algorithm. With this being said, let's take a look at a new example. Once again, we consider to be in two-dimensional space. The dataset that you can see right now is referred to as Two Moons dataset, for obvious reasons. From a visual point of view, you can already clearly identify two distinct clusters. Alright, so far so good. Let's use our trusted k-means algorithm and apply it to this dataset. Let's see what happens. Oh well, it appears that k-means does not correctly identify our two clusters. But why is that so? k-means is based on the Euclidean distance, meaning that points that are close to each other are more likely to be assigned to the same cluster. With k-means, we usually tend to favor more round clusters, which is also an explanation of why we struggle with this specific dataset. To solve this problem, we will introduce a new clustering algorithm, spectral clustering. Spectral clustering does not make any assumptions on the shape of the clusters or imposes a preferred shape. The core concept of spectral clustering is that we can manipulate and transform our data points to make clusters more obvious and simplify the clustering procedure. But what does more obvious mean? Let's look at another example. We are now considering a dataset in three-dimensional space. Visually, it's quite difficult to identify the same clusters. However, if we project our data points to two-dimensional space, we might be able to make existing structures more apparent. As you can see, the projection to two dimensions yields a much nicer structure. And this is exactly what we want to achieve with spectral clustering. To be more specific, spectral clustering aims at embedding the data points to a new space where information about how close or distant data points are to each other is encoded. With this, we basically enhance the relationship between our data points, as we have seen in this example, but without limiting ourselves to a certain distance, like the Euclidean distance. To do so, we have to compute the similarity graph of our dataset. As a quick recap, a graph is a structure that consists of nodes and edges, where an edge connects two nodes. But what is a similarity graph? Let's look at a simple example once again. For convenience, we will label each data point. One of the many different ways to obtain the similarity graph is to connect each data point to its closest neighbors. In our case, we will say that we connect each data point to its two closest neighbors. That means that point 1 will be connected to point 4 and 3. We now do the same for each data point. Our resulting graph now encodes the information of how close data points are, at least to some extent. And one way to represent this in a way for our algorithm to handle it is to represent the graph using its adjacency matrix A. An adjacency matrix is an n times n matrix where n is the number of data points, and each connection or edge is represented as a 1 in the matrix. So, for example, we can see that in row 1, column 3, we have a 1 representing the connection between data point 1 and 3. In addition to the adjacency matrix, we can also consider the degree matrix D. This matrix is a diagonal matrix where each value represents how many connections each data point has. So, once again, looking at row 1, column 1 for our data point 1, we see the value 2 as we have two edges connecting to the data point. The adjacency matrix in combination with the degree matrix give us a detailed representation of our graph and provides us an alternative way to look at our dataset. We can now also combine those two matrices by subtracting the adjacency matrix from the degree matrix and obtain the so-called Laplacian matrix L. Now let's get back to our two moons dataset. We can do the exact same procedure to compute the Laplacian matrix. And instead of using our original data point coordinates, we can now use the Laplacian matrix to cluster our dataset. But how do we do that? The Laplacian matrix, and in particular its eigenvectors and eigenvalues, have useful properties that can help us in clustering the dataset. We know that the Laplacian matrix L multiplied with its eigenvectors V is equal to the multiplication of its eigenvalues lambda and V. By the way, the set of eigenvalues of a matrix is also called the spectrum of a matrix. But let's continue. We are especially interested in the eigenvectors that have an eigenvalue of 0. For our dataset, we now obtain two eigenvectors with an eigenvalue of 0, which is not a coincidence. The number of eigenvectors with an eigenvalue of 0 is equal to the number of connected components in our graph, which happen to represent the two clusters of our dataset. So, in a sense, we can say that the eigenvectors of the Laplacian matrix highlighted the clusters for us. 
For the next part, we will simplify the animation a bit as the mathematical details become quite convoluted. If we take a look at one of the two eigenvectors that have an eigenvalue of zero, we can see that the length of this vector is equal to the number of data points in our original dataset. And in fact, the coordinates of our vector match our data points, meaning that the first value of our vector corresponds to our data point 1, and so on. The two eigenvectors act as a compact representation of our dataset. And if we take a closer look at the vectors, we can see that their values can be divided into two groups, which correspond to the two clusters apparent in our dataset. Unfortunately, however, not every dataset will give us the easy solution. Some more complex datasets could potentially be fully connected, meaning that we will have no eigenvector with an eigenvalue of zero. But this does not matter too much, as we will simply take the eigenvectors with the smallest eigenvalues and stack them to obtain a new matrix. For example, let's say we take the four smallest eigenvectors. We then obtain a matrix which has as many rows as data points and four columns. Now we can represent data point one using the first row vector of our matrix. With this, we enrich our dataset with new information obtained from the similarity graph and can use it with any other clustering algorithm that we like, k-means for example. The newly added information will be available to k-means and potentially boost the performance of our model.